What is this sun you're talking about? All the silver work. There it comes. There comes the burr. There it is. The old, there it is. The bird. This is uh, my mom's song called Heal Me. With healers. I don't know what makes us tick. We get too much and we get sick. Come on, baby, heal me. Sharing deep dark secrets. Faces. Hey boy, not bad, eh? Oh yeah, you got yours on too, eh? Okay, so let's go. It's leaning, and I, and I don't think it would have gone anywhere. So there was no panic, but it, it's not. It's definitely not pretty. Look at it, friends. Sawlog burr and stuff, where you actually are making oversized cuts. The like the, the actual picks themselves. Friends, a quick interjection just to set this kind of stage here. Um, this tree was sketchier than both of us realized. Um, but we do know it was loaded into the cedar. So what I'm gonna do, friends, there's a lot of footage on this job. This could take, a, this could be a very long video or it could be put into two and I'm gonna do um, a premiere video on one of them. And that'll be the one with Hogan in the tree with his GoPro footage. To mix them back and forth and go like this right now, there's just far too much goodness and not enough time. So I'm going to give you my interpretation from the bottom and, and watch it happen from the bottom. And then we're going to actually, I'll put little pieces of Hogan's thing in there, but he talks about way too much good information up in the tree for the tree climbers that have been here for a long, long time and all the people. So I'm going to bust this into two videos, my experience from the ground looking at this problem and his experience. I'm not going to mishmash them. It'll be, it'll get way too convoluted and you know me, I'm nuts anyways. So I'll start interjecting and it'll be all crazy. So I'm going to show you what happened for me down at the bottom. And then I'm going to show you what happened to him and we're going to do a premiere on it. Let me know if you like those premiere videos where you guys can come in and talk with us in watching the video with you. I love those. Anyways, this is going to be good. Let's get back at it. The boy's running Steins, friends. He's, this is what he's been, he's been running. And uh, you can see he's I've been had those for four years now. Four years he's had them, and they are super light. And he's running them, and they almost look like a stainless. I don't know what that is, but that that's what it looks like to me, like a stainless, but super nice stein, eh? So Ganges is running. This is his bush setup. He just jumps into her. These boys climb with corks. These guys are the single stemmers. On a TV show coming out recently, I don't know if it's top secret information or not, but I think well, it comes out today. It's on TV now, so the show's on. The first episode comes out today, February fifth. Timber Titans on Discovery. Channel. On Discovery. So that is actually very, very funny. Yeah, you'll see me and all the guys that I work with out, out in the bush. 
this is this is thing. this is cool. So Hogan's. I don't think I'll be on the like they only filmed. There's a lot of guys on the crew, so yeah, I'll probably be like here and there, and yeah. then maybe have one like segment in and in, in one episode. Yeah, just because I only remember they were they are they were filming us for one day, like me and then your, my your, partners, your like guys, the, the yeah. two guys that came to our like yeah area Setting, for, yeah. for a day. So. Oh well, we remember remember friends when me and the boy did that uh, Axemen. When was that? Five years ago. I think so. I think so. It was Can't a long time. He was green, and now he's a timber titan. <laughs> it has a nice ring to it. It sure does, Sonny. I'm super proud of you. So, anyways, he's got this. Do you want your sussies up or not? Oh yeah. Oh, they're right here. There you go. He's got some weaver sussies. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh, darn tootin' they, they are. Cheap, but they, they stretch a bit. Stretch are nice. Yeah, I tried the them ones you had, or I tried some ones, and they were, like, just fabric. Yep. They did have nice padding, but, like... No, there's nice for the carry, stretchies. Usually I'll carry, like, an axe, two or three wedges. Yep. Sometimes carry fuel up the tree. I usually carry one, like, one of my jets. Yeah. It's nice to have... Like with your spurs on, two flip lines, yeah. a rope bag on, so it's really nice to have. So I, I, this is what I ran years ago, and, and these are the good ones. Yeah, son. they're awesome. They're solid. They stretch. Yeah. It's nice to have a little bit of stretch. I like your lanyard, your saw lanyard. What's that all about? I don't know. I got it at Walker's. Really? Yeah. Kind of like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I like this one because it's like... It's kind of short, but it stretches. Yes. So it's not flailing around. Son, kick up one boot. I want to show the, the corks that we do. So, friends, it's mandatory by compensation that we wear corks in the bush. Okay? But climbers take their two corks out here so that they can get their gaffs in there. Yeah. I have a set of residential uh, gaffs. Oh, that's be those are nice fit on those, son. Yeah. Viberg. So that's that's Hogan's first set of Vibergs. He <laughs> using them. So that's why we take those two sets of corks out in the middle, friends. Timber Titans. Don't miss it on, what's it called? Discovery, Discovery Channel. Channel. Heard of Discovery Channel. Discovery Channel. That is crazy. <laughs> so he's going to go up and tear this thing apart. Friends, I literally was this close. I was thinking, I'm almost there. And I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to call my boy. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I'm so close to cutting. I may do some bucking today. We'll see what happens. What is this, son, you're talking about? Oh, just a little good thing for well, i guess safety but just because it's annoying if you get the beaners with the wire gates yep and then zap strap them onto your belt yep so then you know you can still open it like that and click your uh i got a gibbs so you got the then, rope for the rope we, grab we got two of them a lot of the time yeah and they get all spun around yes and then they do it'll go down over the gate and it's really annoying so is that the time when you when you get in the tree and you think you, you're you're laid back on your rig and it goes Kook! oh no you just look down and it's like on the gate you know oh yeah so if you, you want them to stay oriented forward so and keep your carabiner oriented forward like so you that. see what they do eh friends he puts a zap strap on there on the wire gate on the gate itself yeah that's actually yeah. a great so idea these never come off the belt you just got to make sure you clean them yeah because they get they get gummed up. Yeah, they do, don't they? Andy, so, I, I just thought maybe it might be useful for this. Well, this yeah, is... It's useful for a lot of stuff. So this I don't is, go off a tree without it anymore. The, oh, no, those... So, friends, he's talking about the claw here. If you've ever heard... This is this is the claw. And they get tossed over when you see these guys like Reg Coats and the the yeah. the boys Reg that have been a, around. Reg does a good video of it, but we do that for wind firming. Yeah. You transfer over. Yeah, like a stand like this, son. Yeah, you'd flip it up over and... You know, you could do this entire strip of like with wind firming in wind one climb firming. almost. No, you wouldn't have to hit the ground. This is t t 18 or 20 meters, I think. Yeah, so, so you can do all day. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Little thing. So here's Andy. the setup. This is what these boys traipse around, and this is what this young fella decided to do. I don't know why, but there he goes in there. And he's got a GoPro, friend. So he's going to get you guys some kind of show you what happened up in there. Hope de do, eh, son? Huh? Hope de do. Yeah. He's going to take this big fur, friend. So once again, if you don't know what's going on here, is this big fur... Actually, you're in the wrong one, Sonny. What? It's that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they all look the same. Oh, this is super... I'm going to put my furs on it, this one. Got, you got it. This is super nice. So, so friends, just so you're up to date on what happened here, 
I'm actually surprised at this cedar tree. I'm surprised it didn't snap. If it had snapped, I think this fir may have continued its path down towards that house. Now, who knows, right? There is a hole for it. Right towards the house, there's a hole for it. And uh, it's a nice piece of wood. But we'll see what happens once it lets go. You see? So it's right away tree. So the roots were probably peeled off the backside of it when they built the road. And it was fine and fine and fine just to the circumstances that it said, I'm not here no more. I'm not hanging on to this no more. And it let go. So beautiful timber in here. So Ganges is going to go up that big fir to the left there. That one. Probably tie in, come down and let that top go. Two of them sometimes. So that's how you pack your saw with a bar like that, chain on like that. Yeah, if you put it like this, it flaps around a little less. Yeah, you don't hang it off the carabiner? Then you hit it. No, because you're hiking. And it's like, oh, so it's whacking off your legs. Yeah, so it's hitting, hitting rocks Understand. Now, you see this, friends? So so this like this makes a lot of sense. All these little things you see, and you don't know why somebody does something until you ask them. So for the climber who's just already up a tree. Oh, first shot. Kids rocking and rolling. Ten times a day. Ten times a day, baby. So there he goes. Ah, this is crazy for me to see this young fella doing this. Timber Titans now, apparently, they call them. Anyway, that is a nice stem. If I was to ask you what kind of a size of tree you'd ever want to climb, you would say that right there. Yeah. It is the most wonderful size tree to climb. Okay, he's set up. There he goes. See, and you'll notice his hands. Go a little quicker. Pardon? Furs go a little quicker usually. Oh, the furs go super quick. Yeah, and sometimes they'll have fallers in there too. So you got to clean, you got to... We don't gotta throw it around, but we gotta cut it flat. Yeah, to get them to the stump. Yeah. So there's lots involved in this. It's not just, you know, oh, my, my tree's done. I gotta, you know, they have to, you got a little little guy on the backside there now. Oh, there you go, you got it, good. So he's just gonna strip, friends. He's just gonna strip his way up there and, uh, and he's gonna turn the GoPro. That's a nice looking shot right there, actually. It's beautiful. <laughs> This blows my mind. I mean, it does and it doesn't. I knew he was not going to be a schoolboy. Or... Just getting that saw working. I should have checked the air cleaner for him. I didn't do that. Fight his way through them cedar trees. That saw just sounded like it opened up, didn't it, friends? All right. It's been a while since I've talked to you guys. We got this uh, situation here. This big fur has blown over. And uh, yeah, it's on this little cedar. It's cranked over pretty good. Uh, there's no pressure on the tree. Maybe a few limbs, but there's no real pressure on the tree I'm in. And I can get above. I can get above it to cut a top off. So that's what we're gonna do. You want to kind of look at where your tree's at and stay clear of it if it were to break free. But this thing's it's on there pretty good. But uh, yeah, it's good to cut these things off at the stem once you're able to reach it. Just because if anything happens, it's just less stuff to poke you or get go in your strap. Or even if it does go, you know, it's less stuff to prevent further hanging up the tree. So you always want to do that when you're in a situation like this. in the limbs I don't know if it would be hanging on it's right up against the stem like like stem to stem not like this it's in there so 
as he as he works his way in there, there's going to be some changes. So anything loaded is going to make a change. A guy's got to stay on the side of the tree that is safest. Off because he's he's concerned about this. So he's going to walk through those and get into a position where it's a little easier for him to still keep maneuverability good, but he doesn't want to cut those off, which is good. It's more food for the tree. Yeah, see, he's just double strapping there now. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I can probably walk on it. There you go. Then, then leave that one and, and do exactly what you're saying. That's, that's exactly what I would do. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting close to where I can probably just put, probably put a cut in it here. Now, you see those two great big things above your head there? These ones directly above me? Yeah, are they in your way? Nope. Good. All right, you can see he's got things looking really good. He's cleaned out in there. He's got everything douched out, ready to go. He's, he's tied in. Ah. Always put your full weight into your system. Maybe repel a little bit. See, that's still slack. Of the cedar, so that's good. Yeah, good. So there's a couple fur limbs that it's leaning on, friends. And I talked to him earlier. I said, make sure, make sure you don't cut nothing that is helping you. And I can see the cedar top now. I can actually see it. It's on the inside there. See? You see that? So he's almost prepared to do a cut here now. Yeah. We're trying to creep this tree over a bit actually. So he's, yeah, he's getting lined up in there nice now. He'll probably fall around underneath it. He's out on it now. He's tied in. I think he's getting ready to let her go, actually. Yeah, he, he's actually on it. Oh, yeah, he's, he's in it. I'm putting my undercut in now. Okay, you're gonna stick on it like that right eh? Uh, no, I've got my strap and my rope in that tree just to get the undercut. I just, it'll be easier to get my undercut in this way. Yep. You, I just copy that. It'll be easier to get my undercut in this way. Yep, you bet. And then I'll go back to that tree and just reach over for the back cut. So you may have heard some of the discussion between Hogan and I, and it was don't cut nothing that's helping you. Do you know what I mean by that? Don't, don't, don't go cutting something that's helping you. Hold that tree. Like it could be a couple of big, big fur limbs like this out and, and leaning. You know, guys know it? Leaning against. And if you cut those, you disturb the compression and the tension, the, the, the loadedness of it. If it's loaded up, you, you really don't want to disturb it. Because your main goal right now in this job is to get a top off that tree before that lets go. It, it, 
I don't reckon it's going anywhere, but this is the mindset. And he, he's got, he's, he's in a nice spot now. He's above it pretty good, but there's still a chance. If you cut the wrong thing that's helping you at this point, bypass it, go beyond it until you get an undercut and, and a back and you can let it, let it fly. Does that make sense? I see guys do it all the time. They cut their rigging branches off and they cut crotches off that they could have used in rigging. You know what I'm saying? I know you do. He's near, he's near the release point here now, friends. This is so fun for me. It brings me back memories when I was, you know, walking him through and teaching him. And because when you're, he's got so much more experience now than, than when I was training him to just climb trees. Like he's been in so many scenarios. He's got like, oh, he's putting a bit of a nest there now. He'll get that on the way down or, or I'll knock that down there. Anyway, sorry. He's up there. I'll, I'll show you. not perfect at all is it oh, no. that worked out just dandy yeah nice shot kid that worked out just dandy yeah nice shot kid <laughs> thanks thank you kind of want to look at that cut looks like i think i cut the oh no yeah, no. Yeah, so when there's something with so much weight on the bottom like that, we do this. Doing, uh, I learned this. Yeah? Was it loaded? It actually came out really smooth. Good. Like when it came off, it, it came off really smooth. Yeah. I'll, uh, you'll see the cut here. I'll show you what I did. I, uh, learned this from a fella named Jamie Shankland I work with. He's a certified utility arborist. He's done it a lot for a long time. And uh, he showed me, you know, when you got something with a lot of weight out there and you need to try and get movement past that fur canopy, you know, we, learn, we do it. We run into this type of stuff all the time out there. Transmission line, so it's remote. You know, there's not a lot of maintenance on these lines. Trees fail all the time in storms and then they're they're like this and there'd be a power line there. So we'll usually back tie them. And yeah, you put a big Dutchman there in the bottom side of the weight and then cut the low side up. I've seen people even cut it off trying to swing trees, but 
you know, it's not good to cut your wood off, but you know, cut your low side up. You'll see how I did that and I looked and then I brought it this way. So all your wood's up here. There's a Dutchman. It sits down on the flat plate and helps kind of just, it makes things go a lot smoother here, not hitting that tree square on. And then, you know, if there's something that you can't hit down there, it'll give you a lot more swing. That was my uh, explanation for that. <laughs> Here's the cut. We don't know yet, buddy. Give us some time, okay? We don't, we don't know what we're doing yet. Let us work through it. There we go. That worked quite swimmingly. Thanks, Jamie. See, here, here was the fear. And, and it, it could not have come out better. That was a nice shot, kid. That's, that's a long freaking top that is right there. So, not much loaded, eh, boy? Done really nicely. So the reason he wanted it over, friends, on this side is, is obvious because the house is here. So to shoot straight through the hole, it, it just, like, the house is right here. So that tree was coming dead square for the house. Uh, and, and there's the top. So nicely done. So, friends, what a blast that was. There's so much more to show. And I think what I'm going to do is actually do a GoPro voiceover kind of a chat. Uh, Hogan explains a whole pile of stuff. There's way more footage to come through, but I wanted to get something up. He's going back to camp, so I'm trying to get this up for him, uh, for him and his gal and that. But uh, what a blast. I will put all his GoPro footage up. I know, I know people would like to see it and 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 listen to Hogan on his way up there and, and what he was facing. I, I couldn't show it all in this video and go back and forth. As I said, it would have been five hours long. That's exaggeration. Friends, thanks for watching. Work hard. Be honest. Part two will be a more uh, some more stuff. I follow the stem. It's pretty interesting down there. So we'll see you on the next video. Work hard, be honest, and be kind, friends. Thanks for watching.